Hi, I'm Joe Walensky, and I'm the program manager for the upcoming UX Writer Conference, which is going to be virtual, all online, and that's June 9th and 10th, so it's everywhere. And one of the fun things I get to do is talk with the speakers who will be participating, sharing their expertise, and today I am talking with Tanya Madich. How are you doing today, Tanya? Hi, Joe. Thanks for inviting me. Yeah, I'm doing fine. It's like today I'm in Amsterdam and the weather is kind of springish, so sun is shining. So yeah, it always, uh, it always gets better because here weather is so unpredictable, so you don't know when tomorrow you'll have a winter or spring, so you enjoy every moment of sun. Well, I, uh, I've always enjoyed my visits to Amsterdam. I've been there several times, always enjoyed it a lot. Hopefully, uh, uh, when our, this health uh, challenge is cleared up, uh, I'll be able to uh, get there again to visit. But thanks for uh, taking the time to visit with me today. And uh, I thought a good place to start would be if you could talk about your background, the things that you have done that had you find your way into UX writing. Thanks, Joe. Yeah, I hope then we will have a chance to have the coffee live in Amsterdam once you come back next time. But in the meantime, yeah, um, as uh, I, I know many of us basically ended up in the UX writing because uh, it is pretty new craft, pretty new profession. Uh, like maybe decade or more uh, long uh, uh, old, uh, but before that I spent uh, before uh, last five years I'm in the UX writing, but uh, before that I spent uh, 15 years in journalism and uh, partially also documentary uh, film production. So uh, and I'm basically coming from completely different background. Uh, I, I swapped careers uh, in late 30s. So this is for me all kind of discovery and uh, very exciting. So I was my last uh, journalistic job was I was war crimes trials uh, reporter in The Hague in the Holland. So uh, it is, there is a tribunal for former Yugoslavia for war crimes in former Yugoslavia. And that's where I come originally from. So 12 years ago, I moved for that job. Uh, 13 even, yeah, <laughs> a lot of time. Uh, in 2008, I moved to uh, Holland for that job. And now uh, in 2015, I uh, switched the careers and I uh, joined Booking and that's where I am. I'm the UX writer and also product team lead in uh, Booking at this moment. Well, I, I, it must have been, uh, I, I, I can't even I can't really imagine what it would be like uh, covering war crimes uh, as a journalist. I'm sure that uh, you know that was something that uh, definitely added a lot to how you write and the way you write. Um, I'm just interested in uh, kind of how were you able to make the transition into doing the things that you're doing now in technology? Yeah, basically, it might seem, yeah, uh, the topic is different, for sure. I'm writing about travel at this point, and I have to say it's a way much more lighthearted, the uh, things that I'm seeing or thinking about throughout the day. Uh, but I, there is a lot of similarities, and I know actually a lot of people came from journalism. For me personally, some things that I took from journalism is uh, first knowing your audience. That's, that's the first thing also you learn, you know, are you writing for, if you write for Economist or for satirical magazine, you know, these are completely two different audiences, different vocabulary, different tone of voice, and these are all basically things that we are also doing with UX writing. You have to know who you, who is your audience to know how you are writing for them. Also, um, Thinking about another thing that I recently, um, a colleague of mine asked uh, whoever was in journalism and then we were discussing what we took from journalism into, into UX writing. And I said, my other thing is killing your darlings because you learn to kind of 
don't attach to every word and sometimes you have this fantastic uh, idea you want to write all of that but basically people who use your website your product they just they don't need these words they need something else and you have to learn to kind of let go and for me that's a very very important skill that you learn with years of writing and editing uh, you have to let go of something that might seem as brilliant idea to you at this point but it's not useful for to whom it's intended yeah and so now you're at uh, at booking.com um, what are some of the things that make up your regular activities there yeah basically you know I'm um, we, I'm working at the company which has uh, around 70 UX writers so it's pretty big group uh, we still somehow know each other everyone but uh, the community is becoming too big to to be like really closely connected um and uh, basically daily uh, daily work it's each one of us i work with the product team uh and uh, i provide a copy for product team but also in my case i am also the team lead for for one of the product teams which actually i think uh in, uh, no matter if you are interested in uh, like people management or not, it's really, really great opportunity, not only to learn these extra skills of people management, but also to learn about other roles. Um, and for me, since I became t t uh, team lead, we call it team lead, uh, it basically helped so much my copywriting because I got way more closer with the developers and uh, why product teams that I'm writing for. One of them is uh, a lot of based of machine learning products. So I have to understand data scientists, they have to understand the product, I have to understand what developers are doing to be able to produce uh, like responsible copy. Because if I don't know which features are taken into consideration, I, I cannot recommend you something really. I cannot tell you why I'm recommending you. And you know, we all don't you know we are i think beyond like recommended for you uh copy so in that way uh it's it's really I, I would say to every copywriter if you have a chance to get more involved as managing product teams yeah do that <laughs> well one of the uh, things that you mentioned to me uh earlier about uh that you get involved with is promoting the value of ux writing uh, within your organization so um how does how, what types of uh, things do you do for that yeah this this is a uh, yeah uh within our organization i'm also the managing editor of booking rights that's our medium blog and this is one of the ways that the copywriters who work there get the get their platform to publish work because i think with many of us things that we do uh, i mean copywriters in general ux writers in general we consider we start considering them normal but there are many people out there who want to start a profession who are not sure who don't even know what is this so for them i think it's very very useful to kind of uh, publish as much as possible but not only like the basics but now to to publish also a bit more uh, uh, higher level stories like how you as a copywriter go through the whole process of uh, user research, renaming a product, what is your role in the product, how do you collaborate with the product uh, owners and stuff. So I think uh, because a big part of our job is not only writing words, that's like the end, but preparing, doing the user research, uh, being part of brainstorm, thinking of the product, understanding the strategy of your team or your company or the product that you're writing if you are uh, the uh, freelancer. It's like there is a lot of things go uh, time into preparation and then at the end, word come, you know, at the end. Uh, and, and this is like, this is one of the things that... Uh, uh, for me, it's very important, okay, the, the medium. And the other thing that I really like to kind of promote the value because you read so much about proving the value of copy. It's new, proving the value of copy in the company. Uh, I mean, we are in the lucky place because value is pretty much understandable, but you still always have to kind of prove your value. What I do usually, I, I try to involve my teammates. So uh, I am owning my copy. Uh, 
but I am also giving chance to others. Sometimes my backend developer gives me great idea for the copy. And then for me, owning doesn't mean proving that like it's only me who can say this. It's not based on authority. It's based on the good idea. So for me, copywriter is more like a curator. You have to be able to recognize the good copy and no matter where it comes from, you know, you don't have to necessarily come up with everything because, you know, many things are already out there. We are curating it, you know, so, so from that side, this is my way. Like I'm trying to involve my teammates. I'm trying to involve them also in the process to explain them how I think. So to have them also think as a copywriters. So next time we never come to this situation that is like, hey, it's just two words. We need some words, you know. There was recently, I don't know if you've seen it, somebody published on Medium, uh, copy bingo, UX writing bingo. So yep. this, was, this was hilarious. And uh, I'm so happy that very often, like, if you involve your team, they basically empathize with you. They understand that you're not just adding words, but that you have a thinking process and working process behind. So I, I really, that that's my way. Also in that way, you kind of, you don't push to get your seat on the table. You basically invite others to invite you and to understand why they need you from the very beginning. Well, one of the things that you you mentioned was uh, collaboration. I wanted to follow up on that because uh, I think uh, UX uh, writers involved in UX, I think one of the, the main differentiations from other types of writing is that collaboration is just part of what we do it it's it it's always involved in the type of things uh, that we're trying to accomplish and that's not necessarily the case in other types of writing where you a lot many times you can go off on, on your own and and just just uh, completely work independently uh, it's definitely different from what uh, what UX writers do. So uh, maybe talk a little bit about how you uh, do collaboration in your work. Uh, so yeah, uh, I mean, this is true. And uh, again, I, I'm always coming back to this. Uh, we, we hear so much that we have to educate others about our role. And I also think that we ourselves have to learn a lot about uh, to add other roles and educate us and that that forms a fantastic base of collaboration. Because if we also express, um, I say, uh, interest into understanding the pain of others in the product teams, then it becomes easier for them uh, to understand us. But on the kind of practical point of view, for example, uh, in the collaboration, like this few months, I'm working with a designer and we are working on the basically making a new product and we are at our homes. So we don't have a chance to talk to product managers, to marketing managers. We, we, we kind of, we are all uh, online, but uh, we are using Figma. I don't know, people use different tools, but I, I admire Figma. It's so simple and so friendly. So uh, through Figma, basically we came from uh, zero product to almost shipping a product in just a couple of months. And I have to say that our collaboration started just the end of the January. So I basically didn't even know uh, this person. We get to know each other and to collaborate. Uh, and uh, again, uh, designer and copywriter are the basis of collaboration. But uh, and then we kind of go out and uh, talk to the rest of the team and the product uh, people. So to be able to ship the things out. Well, we've, we've talked about so many things, but we haven't uh, yet mention your uh, conference topic, which is how uh, you've been working with machine learning. Um, do you want to briefly mention your work in that area? Sure, sure. Uh, yeah, like uh, I'm, I'm basically very passionate about uh, use of machine learning uh, and very cautious as well. 
uh, because as you know, uh, okay, we hear all the time, the future is there, everything, every website we, we uh, you visit, we want recommendations, we want things to be easier, to be simplified, but all of that requires also, uh, you know, giving up some data or uh, privacy concerns. So that's why I say I'm, I'm passionate and concerned, you know, very cautious about uh, machine learning and in general ethics uh, and fairness in machine learning uh, and uh, so i have uh, luck that uh, my one of my product teams that i work with uh, is um, very much focused on the machine learning and i myself am managing data scientists so uh, i i have to understand them as a manager and as their peer a copywriter to to write together so uh, f I would say for last year and a half, I'm kind of more deep into topic and I understand uh, basically that's, that's what I want to talk like how it is important to how it would be easy, especially if you're a freelancer to forget to check all the details and to maybe write something that is not uh, true or uh, what kind of things uh, people would like to hear or not like to hear or want to hear. Uh, so kind of this process of uh, being a UX writer for machine learning uh, products. So this is any kind of, when we say machine learning, it looks like science, but like it's any kind of recommendation. Any Amazon you open, it's like whole pages, like just the machine learning predictions and recommendations and what you want to see based on what you saw, based on what we think uh, you would like to see and this kind of stuff. This is all, uh, these are all algorithms predictions. So basically, uh, I'm really interested in that. And I think a lot of us should be because it's coming more and more in future. Well, it, it is an exciting new area for us to work with, and so uh, it should be a great presentation at our virtual event. And uh, I want to thank you for taking a few minutes to talk with me today, and I look forward to seeing you online in June at the virtual conference. Thanks again for inviting me. Yeah, and I'm really looking forward and also listening to other speakers. There is like a fantastic uh, range of speakers. So thanks for doing this, even if we cannot uh, travel to meet each other. Thanks.